So this is an intro video of my template. It's not super in depth. I'll try to explain as much as I can. But if you've got more questions, comment them below. All right, so let's get it started. All right, so first things to know, just for context, running everything off of this little boy. So I optimize things so I can have six or 700 tracks in my template running off of a laptop. So philosophy before we get started, this is a very efficient template. So a little bit of a story in seven seconds. I went from 256 gigs of RAM to 64 gigs of RAM using B Pro to not using B Pro from rack tracks to instrument tracks. But this basically means the template is easier to use, more optimized. Maybe there'll be some descriptions of what I just said down below, links to longer videos, me building that template. But basically what all this means is that this template is simpler, easier easier to use, more optimized, maybe not as powerful, but very efficient. Let's get this started. So what you see here, first of all, is all the tracks in my template. And I chose to show all the tracks so you can see everything. Here we've got the stems. I'll talk about this in a second. But let's start by describing and just showing some of the main tracks that I've got in my template up here. I've got what I call these catching patches or the fast action patches. I've explained this many times, but basically... when you want this big, epic sound, full orchestra, staccato, short notes type of thing, and you don't want to program everything and record the strings first, and then the brass, and then the woods, and then just a patch that does everything for you. Same thing for long notes. Wire. And again, while this patch is stack doesn't give you as much flexibility and control, it gives you the speed. A few more things, got a piano here. I like to have two pianos loaded so I can have them position slightly different. You know that higher? Like the higher register of the piano will always sound a little bit more right side and sometimes it doesn't help when we are compensating with other instruments in the orchestra. So I've got a version of the same piano, but... Notice that I flipped the panning here to very useful. And here's a trick with contact. When uh, you load the same patch twice, it will not load that twice in your RAM because those files are already loaded in RAM. So in another word, you can load the same patch twice or two contact instances in your template and the increase in RAM is going to be zero virtually and the increase in CPU is also minimal. So no problem. So see, same patch twice. Got another one with a little bit of delay, some more casual textures. Again, duplicated a couple of times. Epic horns. We'll get here in a sec. Same thing with trumpets. Brush short, wood short here. It's gonna be ensemble and then longs. And this is Albion. It's crazy that some of these patches I have, like the old player, got the new Albion, obviously. But just so you understand, some of, like, this template and every composer's template is an evolution. And they've built that template over time. I did a big, massive change in my template recently, but I still, some of the patches, some of the things that are here loaded, I created them 10 years ago. I'm old, Gandalf. Right, let's keep moving on. Strings Basics, you can read the names here, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of context. 12 years ago, I think I did my first movie. I was using a not very powerful computer. This was my template. The sketching fast action patches and also the Strings Basics. I still had some space in my template to load other instruments, other patches, and obviously I did. But this was my template. So it was not a fully fleshed out or casual template. It was just some of the most basic, most important tracks, the ones that I would use the most, that I needed them to be loaded there all the time. And then depending on the movie, depending on the project, I would load specific tracks and those tracks would become like, kind of like the unique template for that specific project. The concept is the same these days, just my basic tracks now, it's a larger template, six, 700 tracks, but it's still the concept applies. See up here, this is the section where I've got my project specific tracks. At the moment, there's just one because this movie, Killer Condo, which by the way, is changed name to Secrets in the Building. This is an email from the director that I worked with in this movie. Urge on December 9 on Lifetime Movie Network. So stay tuned. By the way, once it airs, I can do a breakdown of the soundtrack if you want. Let me know if you'd like me to explain how I created that soundtrack in the comments below. Moving on. So a strings basics, you can read the names, but the one that's most useful for me is a uh, low strings stack. 
And basically these combinations are layers scoring strings, Symphobia, Albion. Trying to move as fast as possible. Again, if you get specific things that you want me to talk about, let me know in the comments. You tell me what you want me to talk about. All right, moving on. This has become my to-go strings library. Cinematic Studio strings. Got the lungs. The shorts. Which come with the measured tremolos. Or if we want to go crazy. Con sordino. Short notes. And then I've got this section that I call the orchestral enhancer. So basically, kind of like, <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, orchestral percussion, a few more things. I also have the arp in here, so celeste, a triangle. Arp, same thing with the piano. I like to have center, left, right. It's very convenient to have the arp left and right because it's going to open the sound with those big lisandos. Or for that, the smaller sound, maybe you've got the arp to the left, which is like a regular pulse of the string. And then you've got the arp on the right with kind of like press de la table, something like this. So this is regular. And then press de la table. So left and right, both of them. I recommend going in here and separating those notes a little bit, see? So they don't start at the exact same time. You get the more like this stereo. Opens the sound, makes it sound bigger. And we've got the glissandos. Piatti, cymbals, tam tam, and small paper percussion for Stuff like this, glock and spill, a few more things, a snare, timpani hits, timpani swells, things like this. Sub bomb, you always gotta have sub bomb, drums, and a few more things. So, why do I have kind of like orchestral, then strings, percussion, then back strings? That's just me. Most of the times, I just look at these first set of tracks, I've got most of what I need. So, if you look at my template, up here, see, the Killer Condo movie that I did recently, is the stuff that I'm gonna be using the most. In this case, is the unique patches of this movie, that the ones that are going to make this soundtrack sound unique. Those should be the ones that are easier to access, that's why they are on top. Then we've got the instruments that kind of like create my sound. This is kind of like the stuff that I use the most. And the stuff that we use the most is the stuff that makes a sound like me, like you, like your voice, you, you get the point. And then down below here is the stuff that's nice to have. Because many times I'm gonna be using these sounds actually, but I don't use them as often as the other sounds. So what we got here, we've got kind of the strings advanced. I like Spitfire strings for all this kind of like long notes type of stuff, you know, flautandos, and those are kind of like more advanced techniques. But for example, violins flautando. Super soft, but then we've got kind of like violoncello, tremolo, sul ponticello. Ooh. It's awesome. So obviously, don't use them as often, but it's nice to have them right here. This is another set of strings. So this is similar to what I've got up here. It's just another library. In this case, in strings. These ones up here are cinematic studio strings, the ones that I use the most lately. These ones right here, I still use them quite a bit, but not as often. It's a combination actually of scene strings and the layer scoring strings when I want a much closer sound. Which is super, super dry, but sometimes comes in handy. Yet another set of strings down below here. This is Speedfire, I'm not gonna show 
this, but you get the point. Why so many strings? Well, you're gonna reach a point sometimes where you're gonna feel like, oh, this library gives me this tone or this aggression, right? And this library has this, you know, size, but it doesn't sound as aggressive. So sometimes you're gonna be combining libraries as the only way for you to get that middle point between a flavor and another one. Because when you're recording with an orchestra, you can tell them, can you add a little bit of pressure on the, you know, both? But with libraries, you can't. So combining libraries is the only option you've got. All right, give me just one sec. Dime, cariño. Sí, está grabando un video. Ahora su usted están los suegros arriba. Voy a hacerlo bien largo. Ahora voy. Ah, right, let's continue. All right, now, now, seriously, we have to move fast. So I feel that I'm spending too much time on explaining the instruments, but let me just scroll down real quick. So more strings, and I said brass here, and this is cinder brass mostly, some Berlin brass as well. Then down here, we've got woods, and for woods, I like Cinematic Studio woodwinds. I also use some Berlin woodwinds. I like the tone of Berlin woodwinds, but I like the transitions, the legato transitions better of the Cinematic Studio woodwinds. Now, those are solo woodwinds. Down here, I've got all the ensemble woodwinds and all the performance type of things. So I'm talking brands, whole tones, eternal rips, stuff that if you had to recreate, it just could be sampled, there's no way. We'll talk about this. I'm planning on doing a video on kind of like orchestration hacks, orchestration tips. Let me know if that'd be interesting for you. What I'm planning to do is to talk about orchestration tips, orchestration hacks, but also how to apply those hacks when using sample libraries, because it's not the same thing. Sometimes we have to do things different when we are using sample libraries. But let me know in the comments as well if you'd be interested in sound like that. All right, moving on. My zebras here, so just pulses and things like this. Drones, synth stuff, percussion. So my epic percussion here. Got more stuff, Tychos, epic toms, epic dolls, Titan Ensemble, this guy here. That has a really nice roll. All the hybrid stuff, downers. All the Brahms, I guess. Stuff like this, right? All of these, most of what I use is uh, Audio Imperia or Keep Forest libraries. For a more in-depth view about each one of the instruments that I've got in here, there's a link down below. It's a free bundle. There's a lot of stuff that you can get for free where I talk about the instruments. I've got my template set up. It's a longer video. Then there's a training on how to go from piano sketch to orchestra. I'll explain you how to compose in different cliches, different styles, and also a little bit of mixing. And there's days worth of content if you are interested about this specific stuff. And I'm saying, this because I don't want to make a two hours video. I'm trying to keep it as short, entertaining and light as possible. If you are the overachiever one or you want to know more, down below. We call it the Mifgi, the most incredible free gift ever. So now we've talked about the philosophy, going from big to small, from B Pro to no B Pro, rock tracks to instrument tracks, big rig, multiple computers to 56 gigs of RAM to just one laptop, 64 gigs of RAM. Now we took a look at some of the main tracks that I've got in my template. Next step is going to be stems. And the stems are down below, the blue ones, see? Now you see there are two groups of stems. We've got this one, and then we've got this one. Why we've got the stems? We've got the stems for two reasons. Reason number one is organic Reason number two is mixing. I've got 700 tracks in my template. Lots of tracks. Now, I've got a set of templates to keep things organized. So maybe I'll have highest staccato strings. I'm gonna go to this template. High longest strings that are gonna go to this template. Maybe I'll have the lowest strings that are gonna go to this template, etc. Why? Organization, as I said. But this will allow two things. First, sometimes I'm going to be mixing. I've mixed as I was composing, but there can be, if there's time and budget, an extra added process of mixing your music to elevate it, making it sound bigger, more cinematic. I've got all these tracks, right? And I haven't used them all. But if I play this section here, and I look at the stems, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stems, right? Maybe 10. Instead of 20 tracks or so, or 30, I don't know how many of them, but potentially I could export the stems as all the tracks and then do a mixing. And so mixing just with the stems. Why would you do this, Mark? Like you're supposed to mix using the individual tracks. That's gonna give you more flexibility. That's how yours. Yes, I know. 
but I've designed the stems in a way that give me enough flexibility so I can mix, but I can mix faster because I don't have to deal with so many trucks. Way easier, way faster. And also when I'm working with a mixing engineer, most of the times they're gonna ask me not for the stems, but for the individual trucks, makes sense. But sometimes I'll send the trucks and they're gonna be like, whoa, there are a lot of them. It's gonna take me a while. And so I'll send them the stems and they're gonna be much happier. They're gonna love it. So that's reason number one where we've got the steps. Reason number two, for most of the projects that I work on, when I'm done composing, I'm done mixing as well. Meaning there's no mixing process afterwards. The mix happens in the box. We will record a few instruments, but then they get imported in the composing project and we mix in the composing project. It's not like we export the tracks and someone does the mix later on because of the fast turnaround that these projects require. Sometimes it's not even a budget thing, it's the speed. I've got 60 minutes of music, 24 days, let's go! There's no time to do the composing and then do the mixing back and forth. No, it's composing, you send the music, it's approved, export, done. Now, let's talk about export. I just explained you the philosophy, why I've got the stems. I'm gonna show them how I've got them organized, which are them, and then what plugins I've got inserted in the stems, and how I've got the panning configured, so my stems do a pretty good job doing kind of like automated mixing for me. So when I'm composing, I just have to focus on balance. Balance being the key word here, the most important part when we are composing. But then we have everything set up in our stems, so they do what they need to do. So they'll cue the strings the right way, they'll add the right amount of reverb, they'll brighten the trumpets, whatever it is that needs to be done for our orchestra. So all these things need to happen automatically so you don't have to think about. Well, actually, I'm showing to you now. So these are my stems. Let's read the names first real quick. Ensemble short, ensemble long, ensemble percussion, strings short high, strings short low, strings long high, strings long low, double bass, strings, string runs, double bass, brass short, brass long, horns, trumpets, drums, moving short, moving long, piano, choir, auxiliar one, two, three, harp, cymbal roll, percussion, top of the mix. So like the highest pitch percussion. Let's continue. Percussion high, mid, low, super long, symphony, auto percussion, patches and kicks, hits, downers, fetch high, fetch low. Fingers reverse, the wishes, razors, and shatters, drums, let your bass, seems short, seems long, looks high, looks, looks low, pulsing high, pulsing mid, pulsing low. Whew. All right. And as you can see, I've got a few things added here. So I cannot explain this in, in depth, but basically we're gonna open the strings a little bit. We're gonna do a little bit of compression for percussion or parallel compression. We're gonna add a little bit of reverb to some instruments. We're gonna close some of the instruments, see? This is stereo panning. We're gonna EQ, carp out a little bit of the low frequencies to avoid madness. Add a little bit of air is for the ARP stem. Add a little bit of analog saturation, things like this. I cannot explain all this because we would be here forever, but let me know in the comments if you want more in depth with this. But again, mucho más detalle in the package that I put together down below. It's free. Trust me, go check it out. Now, the other set of stems that I showed you earlier, these are super useful. So if we look here again one more time, lots of tracks, and then we've got our main stems, right? Maybe I'll have like 30 or so. Here I've got like 700 tracks, then I'll have like 30 stems. What I'll do is I'll have a final group of six stems. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'll group some of these stems to here, 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 etc. right? And these are stems are orchestra, percussion, synths, lead, bass, other. And these names can change. But this is what I'm going to submit for the dub mix. This is what I'll send to the music editor or whoever I'm submitting the music to when I'm done with the queue, and the queue is approved. So it means that the process is gonna be one, composing, two, the queue gets approved, and number three, once it's approved, submit, master, and the stems. These stems? No, amigo, these stems here. These would be if I would have to send my music for a mixing engineer to mix the music. But this type of like TV movie, you've got 24 days or 30 days or 40 days for 60 minutes of music. These are the stems that I'm going to submit along with the master track as well. So the process the tracks go through is like each one of these tracks has a little bit of EQ processing to avoid frequency stacking. That's the only thing that I've got here. Then I've got these groups of stems. Then the next set of stems We've got the, what I call the pre-mix or automated mix. These guys here. Panning is the most important thing and a few more things as I mentioned. Sometimes it'll be a little bit of analog saturation. Sometimes we'll do a little bit of compression. Sometimes we'll add a little bit of reverb. And then finally, we've got the last set of stems. These guys here. It will separate my mix. It'll divide my music in six big groups orchestra, percussion, synths, etc. When the dub mixing engineer is mixing dialogue, sound effects, 
and our music, they have a little bit of freedom and flexibility and they can play around the different musical groups. So for example, if there's dialogue and your music's here and there's a shaker, it is stepping on dialogue and it's very annoying for them instead of them having to bring down the entire music which would maybe kill the emotional component that the music is adding to the scene if they've got access to the percussion stem they can bring down the percussion and still keep all the melodic orchestral stuff let's say let me show you for example what i submitted for my last movie see killer condo final exports master and stems and as you can see here each one of the tracks will have the master here, and then we'll have bass, lead, orchestra, other percussion seats. So you can see how each track is actually a group of tracks. So now, the combination of bass, lead, orchestra, other percussion, and synth, if you put these six tracks together, it's gonna sound exactly the same as the master track. These six stems are actually routed to the master track up here. That being said, this set of plugins here. These are my mastering plugins. So generally, when you're composing music, traditionally, there are three steps. Number one, you're gonna compose the music. Number two, you're gonna mix the music or someone's gonna mix the music for you. And number three, we're gonna master the track, mastering. Each one of these steps can be isolated. Different people could do these steps. But what I'm trying to say is the very important processes. I've got the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor. I've got a little bit of analog tape. And then finally, I've got a little bit of fresh air. Why do I have the mastering plugins six times instead of having them loaded in my final master track? It's because what I just explained, the combination of these four should sound exactly the same as the master track. If I were to apply these plugins in the master track, the master track would sound actually different than the combination of these six. If we export each one of these six stems without any processing, right? And then we also export the master track with the mastering processing. And then the dub mixing engineer has the master track and it's like, it sounds good, it sounds good, it sounds good. Now the shaker steps on dialogue. Well, let me go from master track to stems and then bring down the shaker or the percussion stem. The problem is that the combination of those six stems is gonna sound different than the master track because the master track was mastered. The mastering plugin change that we added is changing the sound of the master track. So the dub mixing engineer has to put time to try and match the color of the sum of the six stems with the master track. It's so confusing. So solution, using very efficient plugins so you can load them several times in the stems. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one track and I'm gonna show you the exact path that that track is following. Let's just start with uh, violins one short notes. First of all, it has a little bit of EQ, so without with brightens the sound a little bit. Second, this track goes from this track to the strings short high stem. So basically, we've got a little bit of S1 that's gonna open the strings a little bit. So you can feel a little bit more of width. I tend to open the strings generally because the, when you go from surround to stereo, we tend to lose a little bit of width, especially with the instruments that are closer to the mic. Just because the farther you go, the narrower it's going to sound or the width to narrow effect, it's going to be less noticeable. So those instruments that sit closer to the mic, to the Decatur mics, like the strings, I like to open them a little bit because we are in a stereo environment here. So now we've gone from the track to the stem and now to the final stem. Orchestra, and we've got three plugins. This is how it sounds without the processing. See that I turned off all the plugins. So it's kind of like adds a little bit of brightness, depth to the sound and you open the sound a little bit, adds a little bit of character. Now the second one is going to be subtle as well, the J37. That's a little bit of character, a little bit of brightness in the mid to high end and a little bit of that analog saturation. And then finally this one is going to be way more obvious, fresh air, free plugin. 
be very careful with this plugin because it's gonna make it sound more pleasant but we get used to high frequencies very quickly so you will overdo it it's a tad overdone in my opinion here so i could bring this down a little bit for now i'm not gonna change anything so that's the violin staccato let's go with another track let's do the same thing one more time let's go with epic horns <laughs> All right, so first let's open and see what creates this sound. The secret I would say is having the one trombone added to this whole thing. Trombone, yes. This is a horn spot, but it's a secret Hollywood orchestration technique is to add one trombone to horns when you want a bigger, more epic sound. <laughs> See, it also opens the sound because the trombone sits in the opposite side of the room without with just one trombone added to the group of horns all right cool on top of that i added a solo horn for definition more horns from albion in this case this is all seen as brass this is albion just to add a little bit of size see the room the reverb without with has that size of that air studio room. And then finally, a little bit of Marcato for aggression from Symphobia. So it adds a little bit of character at the beginning of each one of these notes. So this is the sound. Now, what's next? We've got very subtle EQ. See how cleans up the mid, low, and a little bit. And even though it's very subtle here, it's meaningful when you combine it, you put it all together with the other instruments. All right, after this, we are going to the horns stem. So let's go there and see what we've got. Not much, just a little bit of reverb without, with, just the whole reverb with nice, even decay. And then after that, it goes one more time to orchestra. Do this one more time. It's cool how it adds a little bit of aggression, which works so well for this particular sound. Then, same thing here with a little bit of character as well. And finally, they are clearly noticeable here what this plugin is doing to the sound. Again, I may think it's actually maybe a little bit too much. I'll reconsider tweaking this next time I'm composing a cue. That's pretty much it. One thing that I did not say is that all my tracks will have a little bit of analog saturation. See, like this, a little bit. A little bit of EQ. Then this one goes to the percussion low stem. I closed the mix a little bit. Let's see what's the difference. a little bit more focused and it gains a little bit of power and it opens and allows a little bit of more space for other melodic instruments to cut through the mix or to be here. Imagine that we've got like the type of thing and we've got the staccato strings doing something similar. We're gonna open them a little bit and they're gonna sit a little bit more on the left side where we've created a little bit of a space when we closed the panning of this low percussion stem. Got a little bit of multiband compression. A little bit of max bass. And a little bit of parallel compression. It just adds weight to the mix. So parallel compression, that's exactly what it does. It thickens the sound. It adds weight to the mix. I don't have it in every single stem. I have it applied in those stems where I think the track would benefit from having that sound being thicker. Hey, I think we are done. I think it's a uh, long enough, good enough, training enough video. If you want more, you've got more stuff, Mythki, most amazing free gift ever down below. Me talking about this and expanding on this and uh, allowing me the time to go deeper in each one of the things that we talked about. And I'll talk about the libraries that I use, the free, the paid, how to go from sketch to orchestra, how to compose in different styles, cliches, things like this. A lot of good stuff for free, days of content. If you want down below, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, thanks for your time, bye.